we saw the pictures earlier how when we put the acetates at 7.2 degrees each, we had Lord Paykal dying with a bird on his head with the bat mask across his face. Well, when we turn the acetates another 7.2 degrees, we now see Lord Paykal with a bat god here. There's the bat god, his two eyes, his head, and his arms. It looks like a 747 coming into land. And we have the god of death with his cloak. It's like a skeleton. It's two eyes, his nose, his mouth. It's like a chimpanzee with a black hat on, with a cloak. This is the god of death on his mouth. On his head, we have the god of the north, Yeotl. And Yeotl has two skeletons, one in each hand, and he's standing on the guy's head. And there's a hole in Lord Paykal's head. Now, the reason the hole's there is to allow for the soul to leave the body on death. The Chinese did the same thing. This is a, a, a jade suit, a jade burial suit from China. And this is from the tomb of Prince Li Sheng, who came after Qin Shi Huang Di, the first emperor of China in 220 BC. And what we see is that there's a hole in his head to allow the soul to release. And his head, the platelets on his head contain the entire super science of the sun, which is what we were talking about earlier on, how the sun radiates radiation which impinges on the earth and all that stuff. Also, these two dragon heads, these two baby dragons are very important because we'll find those on the Holy Grail if we get to it later on. Now, this picture of Lord Paykal dying, we had the two pictures of Lord Paykal earlier, the two heads. That was one of the heads, and the other one had a crack in the nose bridge, which I said was very important. Well, here we see the crack in the nose bridge area here, and what this is telling us, it's like breaking an egg. We've got, Lord Paykal's got this skeleton in his mouth, like two hooks, and he's got your Lord... Tezcatlipotl Yeotl, he's a god of the north, on his head. And he breaks open like an egg, if you can imagine an egg snapping. And his forehead opens at the crack, the crack that was on the head on the floor that we saw earlier. Now, you say, why haven't these pictures been seen earlier? Well, that, that is the acetates without the colors. So you can see the problems of why this could never have been done before we had the computer and the overhead projector. Now, the next sequence in the pictures is this one here? Oh, sure, okay. The next picture, when we rotate the acetates again, is uh, we see the hole in the head here of Lord Paykal's skull. His skull is a black area now. These are the bones, these are the eye sockets here. Out of the crack in the nose bridge area comes this maiden, and she opens her legs, she points to her forehead with a compasses of the Freemasons, and she laughs and smiles. Out of her womb comes a baby with a pearl in its mouth, with wings. That's its back legs and its bottom, and there's its two arms. And the baby spits out a pearl, and the pearl becomes two solar babies. There's two babies there that we saw earlier, the twins, Venus. You see that, you, I'm afraid it's the best we can do, but there's, there's, do you remember the two babies where from Mexico with a solar mark on their stomachs earlier. That's what these two are. And these tell us that they're joined at the navel by a star. So this is Venus. So this tells us that when Lord Paykal died, his soul, there we see his soul coming out of his head. We've got his eye, his eye, his nose, his mouth. There's his chin. And the bird is now carrying his soul. The bird's flapping its wings and carrying the soul out of the head. And in its mouth, the bird has the pieces of the jade mask. So there's an awful lot going on in this picture. This tells us that when Lord Paykal died, his soul went to heaven. It was carried by the capsule bird, the baby bird that was on his head. And he was reborn as Venus, the twins. So this tells us that Lord Paykal was Jesus. He was the rebirth of Venus. I am the bright and morning star. And this is why we have the pearl in the seashell. He was Venus in the heavens. Just like it says in Revelation, I am the morning star and the evening star. And again, if we just have a look at the sequence there, we see this, the skull, the picture's getting worse and worse as his body degrades. And uh, he goes to heaven and is reborn. 
And other pictures on the amazing litter palenki tell us this is the Earth Mother, which is uh, Coat Liqui here, with the twins on Earth. So what we see is the two twins on Earth sucking and holding the nipples of the Earth Mother. Coat Liqui had a thousand nipples, and she had a necklace of hands and hearts. She was a god of birth and rebirth for the Maya, the mother goddess. And so we see that when Lord Pekal was reborn as Venus, the twins, he came back to Earth. And this is how uh, we can reconcile instinct, because how does a bird know how to build its nest? This is a, a nest of uh, swallows or martins. And they know how to build a nest because there were martins in the last life. Uh, you know, how does a dog know how to round up sheep? Because he was a sheep dog in his last incarnation. And if we look at, uh, this is a magic eye 3D picture that we see in the popular magazines. And if you stare at them, you can see other information. This has got the pyramids in this area here, but you can't see it until you stare at it. So somebody asked me a question during the break. Uh, why can't, how did they do this if they didn't have acetates? Well, the Egyptians have tried to tell us about this. Here we see Nefertiti with one eye and one eye missing from uh, the museum. Uh, it's in Berlin now, actually. And she's telling us we can only see half the information. The same with Akhenaten, the so-called father of uh, Tutankhamun. He's got one eye missing. He's telling us we can only see half the information. And we've got a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere. Now, we need acetates because we're stupid. We have to put one here and one here and put them on top of each other. But the Mayans were so intelligent, they opened their left eye, like the magic eye picture, and stored the picture, just like this one. Then they opened their right eye and stored the picture, and then the brain overlapped the two sides. So they didn't need acetates. We're the ones who need acetates because we're stupid. Now, can the brain do this? Well, the brain can do this. There's a report of uh, a girl in England called Vicky Wilmore, and she was 10 years old, and one day she, went to she had a headache, she got up in the morning, went to school, and everything she wrote was upside down and back to front. The only way the teacher could read her essays was to put a mirror to the side of it, and she could read it, and it was perfect. But it was the exact opposite of what it was the day before, and it stayed like that for three years. And so she fell off the uh, chair while watching Manchester United, banged her head, and everything went the right way around again. And she's been fine ever since. So we know the brain can invert things and turn it upside down with no difficulty and regurgitate the information. And this is how, uh, you know, for many years, when I was doing the work from initially the Mayan prophecies in 1995, uh, I thought, well, at least, at least nobody, no human being could do this stuff. No, it's impossible. Uh, it must be a genius. And uh, I considered the possibilities, and then I thought, maybe I've been making a mistake, because, you know, I'm saying that the Mayas were very intelligent, but maybe the Mayas weren't very intelligent. Because could it be, I have been trying to tell people a story that goes something like this. For example, once upon a time in Israel, 2,000 years ago, everybody walked on the water. And everybody turned water into wine, and everybody healed the sick with their bare hands. And I thought, that's not really true, is it? But one man did those things in Israel 2,000 years ago. Perhaps there was one man among the Mayas who did that stuff 1,250 years ago. And then once I thought of that, and I started to look at the stories, Many more stories, and unfortunately, you're not going to see very much because of the, the setup. But that was the, the, uh, the mask covering the man in the tomb. And there are actually three dots on here one, two, three. There are two dots there, darker ones one, two. There's a dot there, one. There's a dot here. There's a bead in his mouth. So I thought, well, could these be markers of alignment, just like the amazing lid of Palenque? Was the amazing lid of Palenque the Rosetta Stone, which taught me the rules? Once I'd found out the rules, could I now take other artifacts, turn them upside down, and line up the dots, like that, and come out with the bat god? Now, again, it's not very clear on here, but there's the eye, the eye, the nose. The, it's got a bead in his mouth. 
And these three dots underneath are aligned. If I can.